It's uh, going to be Psalm 33, Psalm chapter 33. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 33, let me get there real quick and we'll start. Psalm, Psalm 33, verse 4. We're going to read from uh, verses 4 to verse 9. It says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. So what I'm going to be preaching about is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. I know this is something we're all familiar with, but I'm going to preach on this because I think it's important. It's something we should never forget, and we should always, uh, always, always uh, give heed to God's word. So let's bow our head and have a word of prayer real quick. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together, Lord, in, in your house, Lord. I pray that uh, this would be edifying to those that are listening. And I pray, Lord, that you would just be with my stammering lips, Lord, and that everything I say here would glorify you and be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so I want to talk about the word of the Lord. And uh, obviously, you know, just to lay the foundation real quick, I believe that the word of the Lord in the English language is the King James Bible. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting emphasis on God's literal words. Now... What I want to say real quick is that for some reason, I'm not saying this is uh, anything, you know, miraculous or anything like that. But to me, even before I came to the Lord, even before, you know, I was saved, I always knew there was something different about the King James Bible. I always knew that the words were powerful. I always knew that, you know, there was just something about it. I'd been in many churches, many non-denom churches, many uh, churches that were not King James only. But I always had a King James Bible. I never really read it. But when I did, you know, I knew that the words were different. And I just want to talk about some of the characteristics or attributes of God's Word. <clears throat> some things that we should appreciate about it. Point number one I want to talk about is that the Word of the Lord is right. Amen. So flip over to Psalm chapter 12, verse 6. Very familiar passage. Everyone here has probably uh, got it memorized, but it says this. It says, the words of the Lord are pure words. So these words are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And it says this, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, real quick, let me point this out. God is putting emphasis on his words. The Bible talks about how God has, uh, has, has uh, what does it say? He's magnified his word above his own name. I mean, that's a big deal. We're talking about the one true God lifts his word up above his own name. You know, and he says here, it says his words are pure. It says as if they, as, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And it says, thou shalt keep them. Oh Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Something that stuck out to me I never really uh, thought about before is that obviously King, this is King David, and he's speaking by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this is the Holy Ghost speaking through David, and he's talking to the Lord, and he says, Thou shalt preserve them. I mean, that's powerful. You know that this is true. You know that this, these are words that will never be broken. Thou shalt preserve them, and it says them. Emphasis on God's literal words, all of them. Now, uh, a lot of people, there's a false doctrine, and I was talking to Pastor about this a couple weeks ago, that many people will use this verse and other, uh, I believe it's other uh, uh, translations. It says, thou shalt uh, keep him, talking about Jacob, talking about Israel. But the Bible is putting emphasis on his words. And the Bible is consistent from generation to Gen uh, Genesis to Revelation. It's consistent. God is always emphasizing his words. Um, Flip over to 1 Peter chapter 1 real quick. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 1. This is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 23, it says this, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Notice that. It abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but, notice this, the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel was preached unto you. So, I just want you to, to notice that the word of the Lord endures forever. 
Um, so this is very important. This is God's promise to us. Point number two is that the Word of God is powerful. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 4.12. And while I'm reading this, turn back to Psalm 33. Hebrews 4.12 says, The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We know, you know, here at this church, the Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The, the Word of God is a witness. The Word of God, when you're reading it, it's judging you. It's, you know, the Word of God will clean up your life. The Word of God will help you grow in Christ. The Word of God will, it would, uh, you know, the Spirit will guide you into all truth. You know, but the Word of God is powerful. Obviously, the Word of God is used for salvation, right? The Bible just called it the incorruptible seed. That's how you're born again, by incorruptible seed. Um, but flip back this. You should be in Psalm 33, and I want to point out one more thing in Psalm 33. It says, uh, it says in verse number, verse number four or verse number six. It says, "By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth." Now. The Bible's very clear that God created everything with his literal word. I'm going to read out of Genesis chapter 1, and I'm just going to read this real quick. I'm going to read a couple verses. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So God spoke, and there was light. Verse number 6, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So God said, Let there be a firmament, and there was a firmament. Verse number 9, verse number 11, all throughout Genesis chapter 1, you know, Genesis 1 and 2, God's creating things with his word, with his mouth. The Bible says in Psalm 33, by the breath of his mouth. Now, there's a, there's a false doctrine. I don't think many people believe it, but I'm just going to bring it up real quick in passing that, you know, this kind of goes against what the Bible emphasizes by the word of the Lord. And it teaches that the word of the Lord is some second person that's subservient to a greater person. You know, there's people that say there's one greater well, the Bible teaches that God's literal words are what's powerful. It's not a second person. And if you read Genesis chapter 1 just in English, you know, don't use anything else. You're not going to walk away from that and say, well, there's two people working there. You know what I mean? And we're going to talk about where people get messed up on that here at the end. But the point is, though, God said and it was done. Psalm 33, verse number 9, it says, For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Now, Point number three is that God's word created all things. So turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 talks about how Jesus Christ created all things. Now this can be confusing to many people. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And notice this, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now we saw in Psalm 33 and even in Genesis chapter 1 who created all things, God. By how? By his word. Well, the Bible says here in Colossians 1 that Jesus Christ created all things. Well, John chapter 1 verse 14 says that the word was made flesh, right? Now, there's a verse that seems to throw a lot of people off, so I'm going to quote it to you. I don't want you to turn, it here, turn here or anything. But uh, it's a very clear verse, but people try to, you know, take this verse and make it mean something that it doesn't. And it's John chapter 1 verse 1. It says simply, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says this, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, if the Word was made flesh, and we know Jesus Christ created all things, and you see in Genesis chapter 1 that God said, let there be light, and there was light, well then who created all things? Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. The Bible is very clear. The last point I want to make is that the Word was made flesh. I'm going to quote this verse to you real quick. Turn with me to uh, Micah 5, 2. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ is the mighty God. The Bible is very clear that he is the everlasting Father. And the Bible is very clear that he's the Prince of Peace. And the Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ has no beginning. So a lot of people will get this mixed up. And this is all kind of just in closing. But Micah 5.2 says this, it says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, 
Though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of these shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from, old, from of old, from everlasting. And the Bible is very clear that the word endures forever. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So we, should t we shouldn't take it lightly that we have God's word. You know, we should be thankful we have a church that sticks with God's word. You know, it's important to at least have a position. There's many people that don't even believe that God preserved his word, which is just calling God a liar. You know, it's causing confusion in the church. Everyone's got different words. People don't believe in the words. You know, they don't have anything that they can rely on. But we have God's word and we believe that. You know, we shouldn't take it lightly. That's all I have. Let's just bow our head and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you again for the opportunity to preach. Lord, I pray that... Uh, that uh, this, was just a this was a blessing for all of us. Lord, I'm thankful for the opportunity to come together again. And I pray that you just bless the rest of the night for us. In Jesus' name, amen.